And we're just going to start recording now because this is lesson number one in the DBT Self Study Skills course. Hi, everybody. I'm Dwight. You can call me D. You can call me wherever you want. I can't even hear you. Um, I'm a therapist. I've been working in mental health since 1999, so around the turn of the century. And I have been a therapist for about 18 of those years in the middle. I've worked in lots of different things. My experience with DBT, which we'll get into in a second, I was trained in that a couple of years after I started working in, even before I was a therapist. I worked with at-risk youth who had a lot of really dangerous uh, issues and behaviors and also very, very hard time with their emotional regulation. DBT was something we were trained in in order to teach people skills of what they should do. And that's actually the key to DBT and which is what allows me to create a course like this for you. Now, this is not an ad for the course. This is actually lesson number one, which is available at no cost. If you are not already on the website watching this, go to dwighthurst.com slash DBT. The video and audio of this are a couple other places out there through the Broken Brain podcast that I do and my YouTube channel as well. So uh, putting this out there, if you want to learn more about the rest of the course, go to dwighthurst.com slash DBT. Um, that's something I'm with the interest of access of care. I am trying to make it very available to people. So I think it's a pretty fair uh, cost. And let me just tell you real quick about what this course is, whether or not you want to learn about it or whether or not we're going to do it together in full. So this is a skill building course, getting into the DBT skills for basically healthy and happier life management. Okay. This is not therapy. It's also not a replacement for therapy. It's meant to be something supplemental or meaningful to your um, mental health management or your own self-improvement. Obviously, since it's pre-recorded, I cannot do, as I am a therapist, but I can't do therapy with you over, over the pre-recorded. That'd be, boy, imagine someone being that good, right? Um, as I said before, it's a tool for emotional and mental health management. You can learn the DBT skills on your own. You can do a course like this, or you can go to a group therapy, a therapeutic setting where you will get things from each of those types of ways of doing it that you might not get from the others. And the others will give you something that will be missing from the others. There you go. Similar to how you can do any form of self-improvement. And that's what this is meant to be. Uh, ideally, this is something you could use to supplement therapy that you are already getting. If you don't need therapy or you're not doing therapy, that's really your judgment call. And uh, yeah, you can do something like this just to kind of improve and to learn more about it. Uh, clinicians may find this to be interesting too. Uh, this is also not something to manage your high crisis type of problems. If you are having suicidal ideation or anything like that, that is a high crisis, I would encourage you to call your therapist. If you have one, find one. Uh, or if you're in immediate uh, danger, call uh, 988. You can also call 911, obviously, if you can't remember 988. But 988 in the U.S. anyway is a national a phone number to connect yourself to emergency services in regards to mental health emergencies. And so there you go. Uh, there's some resources there, but obviously I can't help you with uh, those things because I'm not there, folks. I am over here. But I do find this to be very, very helpful. DBT is a very, very interesting uh, thing indeed. So let me show you a little bit about that. So let's get right into what is DBT. DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy. It comes from a philosophical school of thought, which is dialectical philosophy. And as far as I understand it, mostly clinically, the definition of dialectical is relating to the logical discussion of ideas and opinions. It is also defined as concerned with or acting through opposing forces. Uh, one of the big ideas of uh, DBT is establishing balance and the idea that we can have multiple thoughts and multiple emotions at the same time. And even though these may often be at odds with each other, uh, that does not mean that they have to be in charge of us. It does not mean that we have to be in crisis all the time. DBT was developed originally by uh, Marshall Linehan, was developed in environments like hospital environments where people were in a high state of crisis and they needed to start learning how to do things right now to start impacting 
uh, what they're going through. Since then, it's kind of trickled down from the highest level of treatment into really all places. I mean, I see it all over the place now. You see it on a lot of the little listings of private practice therapists like myself. In community mental health, I saw it used for those that had uh, severe persistent mental illness, as well as those who were just kind of seeking counseling. It was used with youth. Uh, I worked mostly in the addictions area, and we used uh, a lot of those principles there, as well as ransom groups for those individuals too. And uh, that's something that uh, has been, uh, so it's really sold me on it as a useful tool uh, amidst all the other things that you, you might be addressed as well, or using to address your issues. I keep saying skills. So let me tell you how DBT breaks down, especially in the skills instruction, which is all that we're doing in this course. Uh, distress tolerance is the first area of skills, core mindfulness, interpersonal effectiveness, and emotional regulation. So you've got these four basic areas that, that basically lay out what you're going to be working on. And let me tell you more about them. Here we go. So when we get into it, let's, let's tear a little bit first into distress tolerance. Distress tolerance addresses when we are in either a state of distress, obviously, or a state of acute crisis. Um, this can also include basically when we find ourselves to be overwhelmed or when we are in any kind of a state where we need some kind of help, some kind of management, we need to be able to calm down and regulate. Uh, but we are not in a place or a time or an emotional state to where we are able to reason and do long-term problem solving. This is one of the first important things as we're learning this is you got to differentiate between crisis and just problems. Another way to put this is uh, is urgency versus importance. Some of the other skills deal more with things that are important. Distress tolerance is dealing with things that are urgent and meaning that we have to address them when we have to address them uh, now. So let's move into that. Uh, the next one, the next area of skills would be core mindfulness. Core mindfulness is just as proactive as distress tolerance is reactive. In other words, if distress tolerance is about, you know, surviving crisis, core mindfulness is about building in skills that we're going to use every day to be in a healthier kind of mindset. Now, you may be familiar with the term mindfulness. It's really, really permeated into the culture. Uh, at large, which basically often is used to refer to living in the present moment. That's kind of a surface, more simplistic level of it. It does, and you know, that'll do if you're just trying to define it really quickly. Um, DBT is really, I think, one of the reasons why mindfulness has become popular in psychotherapy, and then it becomes popular in the culture as well. And so core mindfulness really is being able to live uh, in your life, to live as yourself, and to establish and build a life worth living. That will come up in a future lesson because that is based on one of the skills as well. Uh, the next section is interpersonal effectiveness. Interpersonal effectiveness is uh, pretty straightforward. It is your effectiveness with interpersons. There you are. Uh, it has to do with relationships and the way that we engage with those things. So the skills in that area have to do with discovering how do I work with other people? How do I express my emotions and my needs to them? Uh, to some extent, really, how do I ask for things as well? You know, how do I uh, advocate for myself? How can I increase the chances that not so much to get someone to say yes, but at least to get someone to hear me if I have needs? And then how do I balance that out with my own health? Um, in interpersonal communication is very, very important. We hear a lot of people talk about becoming codependent, which with a lot of mental and emotional struggles that can happen. Uh, we also hear about people being maybe pathologically independent, meaning that they have a very hard time networking with anyone at all. So that kind of healthy interdependence and finding a, a balance of how to use dependence in a, a healthy way is, is really what that section is about. Uh, lastly, the fourth group is emotional regulation. Now, emotional regulation ties in with being able to, it's it's really kind of supplemental to the first two skill areas, let me put it that way. Um, when you're in a state of distress or when you are living your life day to day and, and you're not being mindful in your core or whatever, if you're not having good distress tolerance and core mindfulness, one of the reasons for that is when we get emotional. And so emotional regulation is kind of the deeper 
underlying set of skills that tie in with with all these other things yeah you know, matter of fact you're not having good interpersonal relations either and so emotional regulation is tied to those things how do i regulate my emotions when fundamentally emotions are something that we really cannot actually control so that is what that is all about so the uh, focus in this course is going to be looking at how uh, we can implement these skills and also what they are. I want to give you a little bit of something you can work with right here in this first lesson before we finish, which I want everyone to, if you're watching this, to go ahead and picture yourself. It's not too hard, hopefully. And now picture this. There's a, a, here's a little self-assessment that I'd like you to take. This is not an in-depth psychological assessment. It is just basically asking yourselves a few questions. Um, if you look through those skills as I have just defined them, you can say to yourself, what are my strengths in this area? Okay. Then secondly, what in this is a struggle for me? And then third, how would I like it to be? Right? So, uh, for example, if I am looking at, uh, let's say, the area of interpersonal effectiveness, and I want to get this self-assessment to either see if this course could help me or just to plan for making it successful if I'm already taking it. Well, ask yourself, what are my strengths in this area? Always important to start with, by the way. What are my strengths with my interpersonal relationships? Maybe I have a lot of empathy, okay? Uh, maybe I'm a good listener, all right? And uh, maybe I, I get along with people. Maybe I, once I've made friends, maybe I, you know, have a good time and I'm, I'm maybe very loyal to my friends. And there could be a whole lot of different strengths. You get it. And then the second thing to ask is an honest question of what is a struggle for me? So in this area, uh, possibly, uh, could I be impatient? Maybe even with certain people. Am I impatient with my partner or my kids? Uh, do I withdraw when I get uh, flustered or frustrated? Do I really struggle to stand up for myself or some of those types of things and then how would i like it to be well and that kind of that kind of actually brings those two first two questions together a little bit well i'd like to be better you know it's like well, what if what if i am a good listener but what i'd really like i'd like to uh, be able to apply what i'm hearing not not shut down where i'm talking about a difficult thing um, maybe i'd like to and stand up for myself better when I need to. Maybe I'd like to be more patient and not just understand where people are coming from, but allow that to impact how I interact with them as well. Um, there's, there's a little bit, uh, this is not a DBT thing. This is a me, me, me thing, sort of, that I, I've picked up and put together. So I'm going to share this one thing with you before we wrap up this lesson number one. When you are setting, so use those three questions to kind of get your goals in mind. What do I want to get out of these skills and what do I want to get out of this course? Now, with every goal, there are like four areas that you can keep in mind. Usually we only focus on one and maybe two of them. And so uh, every, every goal that we have, there's something that we would like to gain. There's probably something also that we'd like to lose or get rid of. There's something that we have already that we would like to keep. And there's something we don't have that we would like to avoid getting. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a little example of this. Let's use money as an example because that's always fun, right? Um, so if I have a goal of like, well, I need more money or I'm, I'm having money problems, let's say, or something like that. So I look at it and I say, usually I go, I want to gain more money. Done. And there we go. Um, and, and the, the problem with that is I might then just go after money only and assume that that's going to handle the problem. So let's get the other, the other areas help us get a little deeper. Now, sometimes we do make it to the second one here and we say, well, I want to gain more money. Okay. What do I want to lose? Something that I have in my life that I'd like to get rid of. Maybe it's debt or maybe it's Oh, uh, maybe some worry or stress. When I go to the grocery store, I don't want to have that little Ugh, feeling anymore, right? I want to be able to have confidence. Uh, and so, well, that goes back to gain, obviously. So you see how these work together. And, but that also informed what I already answered. I just don't, I don't want to just gain money. I actually want to gain confidence when I was thinking about wanting to lose the stress. So you see how this kind of helps. You get into the, the, in the third area here, which is keep. Is there anything in my life that I have that could be impacted by this goal that I do not want to lose? I want to make sure to keep it. Um, 
what if I have a good relationship with my partner and my children, if I have any? Uh, what if I have a good uh, friendships and things that I actually use my free time in very healthy ways that make my life better and worth living? And maybe I'm even valuable to those people. Okay. I want to keep that. So therefore, if I rush out and get a bunch of like extra jobs or start, you know, a lot of side hustles, I need to be aware that whatever goal I am, I don't want to, com I don't want to lose right? Those kinds of connections and things that I have in my life. So I want to keep those. I want to keep those. That's, that's going to be important. And whatever goal I have has to be formed around that as well. And then last of all is avoid. Uh, what is it that I want to avoid? Well, I mean, that last one kind of gave me some ideas. I want to avoid uh, overstressing. Maybe I want to avoid becoming obsessed with money as that's my only thing. I want to avoid you know, overworking. I want to avoid getting so busy that, uh, you know, when you're trying to work on budgeting finance problems, you can put so much effort into making more money that you actually spend more money because you're not actually taking care of <laughs> things as much in your home. And you might, uh, you know, maybe I need new clothes or uniforms for a part-time job and I need to be careful about that. Maybe I eat out a lot more because I'm running from one thing to another. Uh, maybe there's just, you know, things that I, I would like to avoid if, if that's uh, an issue. Maybe I also already have some issues with being home enough for my family and I want to avoid that getting worse. So once again, some crossover here, but that's good because they all work together. Trying to deepen the goal. So if I say, oh, I want to improve my interpersonal effectiveness from that example I, I just gave, then if I would put it through this as well, I'd say, well, what do I want to gain? What a, Well, I, maybe I said I want to be able to make my needs known and communicate clearly. Okay. What do I want to lose? Well, I would like to lose and avoid misunderstandings or periods of uh, stonewalling or silence that I might put people through around me. What is it that I want to keep? Well, maybe, you know, let's think, you know, if I want to be able to be more open and be understood, uh, maybe I have some people in my life who already listen to me. I'd like to keep that. Maybe I actually have a benefit of when I, that I really think through things before I say them. I don't, and I want to keep that, right? I don't want to just, uh, uh, you know, start blurting things out without thinking, right? That gets into the last one once again. It flows into what do I want to avoid? Well, maybe I want to avoid being too pushy. Maybe I don't want to be brash and bullyish about things. Maybe I'm worried about that. So I'd like to express myself and stand up for myself, but I don't want to become too pushy. And so there's an avoidance thing or avoid, I should say, healthy thing, healthy way to avoid something that I would like to. I hope that this has not only given you a sample of what I'm talking about here uh, with the course, but also this is the first lesson. Feel free to, you know, obviously, if you use this, you can find lots of things about DBT out there on the web. You can find even just lots of things if you look up my, I mean, listen to some back episodes of my podcast or look at the YouTube channel. And those links are here on the site, dwighthurst.com. Um, and you can see a lot of those things are free. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about it, go to dwighthurst.com slash DBT. And if you don't, that's okay too. Thanks so much for watching. All right. Bye-bye.